Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In this video, we're going to make what I'm going to call a fireball effect. So it looks like this here. So when you press a letter on the keyboard, it shoots off this blue flame. And then when you hit another player with a humanoid part, it does damage to them. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. There's going to be a couple different scripts that we're going to have to write for this. We're going to start, though, with a local script under starter player and then under starter player script. So on this script, we're going to use the user input service to see when the player presses a key on the keyboard. So we're going to start with a variable. We're going to say local user input. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put user input service. Next, we're going to define the local player. So we'll say local player. And this is going to be equal to game dot players dot local player. Next, we're going to get the mouse. So we'll say local mouse. And this is going to be equal to player colon get mouse. Okay, and part of the script that we're going to write involves using remote events. So before we go any farther, let's go under replicated storage. Go ahead and add a remote event and then rename it to fireball event. If you want to choose a different name, that's fine. Just make sure you update it in the script as well. Now that we have that remote event, we're going to define the replicated storage. So we're going to say local replicated storage. And that's going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put replicated storage. After that, we're going to create a variable for the remote event. So we're going to say local fire event. And this is going to be equal to replicated storage, colon, wait for child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of our remote event. So in our case, it's fireball event. If you chose a different name for your remote event over here, this is the spot in the code that you would change. Okay, next we're going to define a function. So we're going to say local function. The name of the function can be something like throw. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put input, comma, and then game process. Okay, the first thing we're going to do inside this function is say if not game process. Then inside this if statement, we're going to say if input. So that's referring to this input right here. So if input dot user input type, if that's equal to enum dot user input type, so this is the list of all the different user input types. And we're going to be looking for something to happen on the keyboard. So we're going to say dot keyboard. Okay, so if there's some input on the keyboard, then what we're going to do is say local key code. It's going to be equal to input dot key code. To check to see which key was pressed, we're going to say if key code is equal to enum dot key code. So once again, this is a list of all the different key codes. And in our case, we're going to be looking for the letter E. You can choose whichever letter you want to, though. Okay, so if the letter E was pressed, then what we're going to do is we're going to trigger the remote event. So we're going to say fire event, colon, fire server. And then what we're going to pass to the server is the position of the mouse. So we're going to say mouse dot hit dot p. Okay, and finally, we want to run this function whenever some type of input is detected. So we're going to say user input dot input began colon connect. And then we're going to connect this to our function, which is throw. Okay, and just as a test to make sure this part is working, we can just do a print. And let's go ahead and print off the position of the mouse. All right, so let's go ahead and run the game and we can check it out. All right, so we're in the game, so let's go ahead and open up the output so we can see the print message. Okay, and what I'm checking for is every time I press the letter E, it should print off the mouse's position. Okay, so it looks like that part's working. So let's go ahead and move on to the server side where we're actually going to create the flame effect. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is write a script under the server script service. On this script, we're going to start with the replicated storage and also the remote event like we did last time. So I'm just going to go back to this one, and we can copy and paste. The next thing we want to do is write a function that will run whenever the remote event gets triggered. And we can do that by starting with the remote event. 
and then we're going to say dot on server even. And then we're going to say colon connect. We're going to connect this with a function. So this is just a different way of connecting the function to the event. So next to function here, we're going to put parentheses. Inside of the parentheses, we're going to pass player, which will be the player that triggered the remote event. And then we're also going to say mouse POS. So this is going to be the mouse position, which we pass to the server with this value right here. After that, we're going to put the mouse in between the last two parentheses and press enter a few times. There's going to be a couple different sections that we're going to write, so I'm going to separate them out by using comments. So for the first one, I'm going to say create new object. And what we're going to put in this section is all the new things that we're going to be making. So we're going to be making a part, a fire effect, and also a string value. So let's go ahead and start by saying local fireball. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put a part. Next, we also want to create a fire. So we're going to say local flame. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. Here, we're going to create a fire. After that, we're going to say local caster. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. And this time, we're going to be making a string value. As we go through the script, we're going to be using these different items. So if you're not sure why we made one of these, don't worry about it for now. It'll be more clear later on. Okay, so the next section we're going to work on is going to be called caster info. So the reason we're using this caster value is so that when the player creates the fire effect, it'll damage other players, but not the person who created it. Okay, so under this section, we're going to start by saying caster dot value. And this is going to be equal to player dot name. Then we're going to say caster dot name. And this is going to be equal to caster. After that, we want to attach the string value onto the fireball. So we're going to say caster dot parent is going to be equal to fireball. Okay, and that's all we're going to do for this section. The next section is going to be flame info. So in this section, we're going to be defining some different properties of the flame. So I'm going to say flame dot parent is going to be equal to fireball. So this is going to attach the flame onto the part. And then we're going to define the size. So I'm going to say flame dot size. And I'm going to set this equal to 10. If you want a larger fire effect, then increase this number. If you want it to be smaller, then choose a smaller number. Okay, and finally, we're going to choose a color for the flame. So I'm going to say flame dot color. It's going to be equal to brick color dot new. And the color that I like best for it was toothpaste. But you're welcome to choose whichever color you want to. If you're not sure which colors you can choose from, then what you can do is just insert a part into the game. And then look under the color section here. And these will be the colors that you can choose from. So for example, if you want this color, you would put lime green. And if you want this red color right here, then you would put really red. OK, so that's it for the flame section. So now we're going to move on to the fireball. So I'm going to say fireball info. And for this section, we're going to start by saying fireball dot name. It's going to be equal to fireball. Then we're going to say fireball dot parent. It's going to be equal to game dot workspace. We're going to define the shape of it. So we'll say fireball dot shape. It's going to be equal to enum dot part type. And then from the part type, we're going to choose ball. OK, next we'll say fireball dot size. And this is going to be equal to vector 3 dot new. And what I did, I just made the part really tiny so that you don't really see it. So for the numbers, I chose 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. Okay, next we're going to define the color of it. So I'm going to say fireball dot color. And this is going to be equal to brick color dot new. And here you can choose the same color you did before or choose a different one. So I'm just going to choose the same one and choose toothpaste. OK, after that, we're going to make can collide equal to false so it doesn't bounce off of objects. So I'm going to say fireball dot can collide. And this is going to be equal to false. OK, so that's going to be it for the fireball section. So next, we're going to create a section that will control how the fireball moves. So I'm just going to call this one moving the fireball. 
Okay, in this section, we're going to start by defining the speed. So we're going to say local speed. And this is going to be equal to 250. Okay, so this will be how fast the fireball goes. I found 250 was a pretty good number, but you're welcome to adjust that. After that, we're going to say fireball dot C frame. And this is going to be equal to C frame dot new. Inside of the parentheses, we're going to put player dot character dot right hand. So this will be where the fireball comes from. And then from the hand, we're going to say dot position. And then we want it to move to the mouse position. So we're going to put mouse POS. After that, we're going to define the velocity for it. So we'll say fireball dot velocity. And this is going to be equal to fireball dot C frame. And then from the C frame, we're going to get the look vector. And we're going to multiply this by the speed. Okay, and the final section is going to be attaching a script that we're going to put in server storage onto this part. So let's just go and call this attach damage script. Okay, and for this, we're going to say local fireball script. And this is going to be equal to game dot server storage. We're going to say colon find first child. The name of the script that we're going to write is going to be fireball damage. And then to make a copy of that script, we're going to say colon and clone. And then to actually attach it onto the part, we're going to say fireball script dot parent. And this is going to be equal to fireball. Okay, so that's everything for this script. So the last thing we're going to do is insert a script into server storage and rename it to fireball damage. And if you want to choose a different name, that's fine. Just make sure you update the name right here as well. Okay, on this script, we're going to say local fireball. And this is going to be equal to script dot parent. Next, we're going to create a function that will run whenever this part touches another object. To do that, we'll say local function. The name of the function can be hit. Inside of the parentheses, we're going to pass other part. Okay, first we're going to check for a humanoid. So we'll say local humanoid. And this is going to be equal to other part dot parent. And then colon find first child. And then we're going to be checking for a humanoid. Next, we're going to say if humanoid and fireball dot caster. So this is the string value that we created before. So that's this right here. So inside this caster value, we're storing the player's name who created the fireball. And what we want to do is make sure that value is not equal to humanoid dot parent dot name. Okay, so this time right here is how we're making sure that the player who threw the fireball doesn't get damaged by it. So you can think of this like if there's a humanoid object and it's not the player who threw it, then what we're going to do is say humanoid colon take damage. And then inside the parentheses will be the amount of damage that you want to do. I found that 30 works pretty well, but you're welcome to change that if you want to. After that, we want to clean up the fireballs after they get thrown. We can do that by saying game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to put debris. And then after that, I'm going to say colon add item. What we want to clean up is the fireball. And then we want to clean it up after 0 0.75 seconds. Okay, this number is also something that you can play around with if you want to. Okay, and finally, we want to run the function above whenever the fireball touches another object. So we're going to say fireball dot touch colon connect. And then we're going to connect that to hit. All right, so let's go and run the game and make sure everything's working. Okay, and if we try it out, it looks like nothing's happening. So let's go and check out the output and see what's up. Okay, so we have a red line here, so let's check it out. For the actual error, it says invalid argument, color three expected, got brick color. So what we have to do to fix that is after the brick color part, we're going to say dot and color. And then we're going to do the same thing up here as well. So what that does, it takes the brick color and then converts it into a color three, which is what it wants down here. All right, so let's go and run the game again and see if that fixes it. Okay, and now when I press the letter E, I have the fireball. And let's go and make sure that it damages the other players. Okay, and it looks like that part's working too. And then you can see after a short period of time, the fireball goes away. So that's part of the debris service.
Okay, so it looks like everything's working. So before we end with this video, I'm just going to run through it quick and show you some of the parts that you may want to adjust. Okay, so on the local script, some things that you might want to change is you can choose a different key to launch the fireball. If you want to, you don't have to use the keyboard. You can use one of the buttons on the mouse. On the script that we wrote for the server script service, you can change the color of the flame. So let's go ahead and try that out real quick. So instead of toothpaste, let's try a different color. Instead of toothpaste, let's try lime green. Okay, you can also change it here as well, but it doesn't really matter since the part is so small. Another part that you might want to adjust on the script, you can change the speed to make it faster or slower. And then finally on the damage script, some different things that you can change. You can adjust how much damage the flame does, and then also how long it takes before it gets removed from the game. All right, so let's go and take a look with the new color and see how that looks. Okay, so now instead of the blue color, we have a green one, which I actually kind of like as well. I kind of like the green one better than the blue one, actually. Another thing to keep in mind is the only part of this flame that's going to damage the player would be the tiny fireball inside of it. So if I shoot to the side of the player, even though the flames are touching the player, it doesn't do any damage. If you want to make it easier to damage the player, then on the server script service here, you may want to increase the size of the ball here. Anyways, there's a lot of different things that you can do to customize the script, so I hope you have fun with it. This is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.